So Google has a series of secret questions called Foo Bar. They give you a scenario and you have to create a script in either Python or Java. In this video, we'll be stepping through one of these challenge questions and creating a Python script to answer it. There's some unrest in the minion ranks. Minions with ID numbers like 1 and 42 and other good numbers have been lording it over poor minions who are stuck with more boring IDs. To quell the unrest, Commander Lambda has tasked you with reassigning everyone with new random IDs based on a completely foolproof scheme. Commander Lambda has concatenated the prime numbers in a single long string. Now every minion must draw a number from a hat, that number is the starting index of that string of primes, and the minion's new ID number will be the next 5 digits in the string. So if a minion draws 3, their ID number will be 71113. Help the commander assign these IDs by writing a function solution, which takes in the starting index n of lambda's string of all primes and returns the next 5 digits in the string. Commander lambda has a lot of minions, so the value of n will always be between 0 and 10,000. So we aren't given the string of prime numbers, the only input is the number n that the minion drew from a hat. So we need to figure out an efficient way to generate the string of prime numbers. This script is going to get called once per minion, so we will have to generate the prime string 10,000 times. This seems super inefficient, so the first thing that came to mind was to generate a prime string the first time it's called, and then to store it in a cache so that at each consecutive time the script is called, it's already got the prime string generated and ready to be indexed. However, I was quickly humbled to find out that we cannot use any imports or exports, meaning we can't save a cache file. So unfortunately, we will have to generate the prime string every time we call the function. One of the most efficient ways of generating prime numbers is to use the sieve of Eratosthenes. To demonstrate how this works, we're going to find the prime numbers using the sieve of Eratosthenes within the first 100 integers. Notice though, we have to start with how many integers we want to search through, in this case 100, before actually knowing how many primes there are within the first 100 integers. This will be important later. So with the sieve of Eratosthenes, we have a list of all of our numbers here from 1 to 100. Let's first remove 1 because 1 is not prime. Next, let's go to 2. Let's keep 2 and remove every multiple of 2 in this list. So why are we doing this? Well, a prime number can only be divided by 1 in itself, so if the number is a multiple of 2, that number would also be able to be divided by 2, making it not prime, so we remove it. Next we'll go into 3, let's keep 3, and remove every remaining multiple of 3 in the list. The same applies here, if it's a multiple of 3, that means it can be divided by 3, which is not the definition of a prime number, so it gets removed. Now let's move on to 5, same thing, let's remove all multiples of 5, and now 7, remove all multiples of 7. Now the cool thing about this algorithm is that we only need to check numbers up to the square root of our max limit. So our max limit here is 100. Square root of 100 is 10, so we don't need to check anything after 10. So here we are, we've successfully identified every prime number up to 100. So here, with all these prime numbers put together, we can produce this string, which is 46 characters long, which is perfect for the minion who drew number 41, because their ID would be right here at the end. But if we were trying to generate the ID for minion number 41, how would we have known to go through 100 integers? We need to be able to know how many integers we need to search through in order to produce a prime string long enough for any number a minion may pull. So here, I've gone through and plotted the length of a prime string versus the number of integers we needed to sift through to create that string. So here on the y-axis, we have the number of integers, and on the x-axis, we have the length of the prime string. So for example, if we use the sieve of Eratosthenes between 1 and 12,500, there would be enough prime numbers produced to create a prime string that is about 6,000 characters long. Okay, so we need to be able to represent this trend with a formula. As you can see, it's actually quite linear, so let's find a linear formula that can represent this trend. And so here's the formula I came up with. So let's say I have a minion who drew number 7,995. So we would need to generate a prime string that is 8,000 characters long. So all we have to do is plug in 8,000 into our formula, and you'll see that we would need to go through around 16,702 integers to generate enough prime numbers to create a string of length 8,000. So now that we've got that explained, we can now go back to our editor to start building our solution. So the first thing we need to do here is to find what our total prime string length needs to be. So a minion pulls 7,995, we need a prime string length of at least 8,000. So here, let's just do string underscore len is equal to n plus 5. Okay, so now that we know the length of the prime string, we can now plug that into the formula we just created moments ago. So I'll do max int is equal to string underscore len times 
We'll do 5,000 divided by 2,465, and then plus 475. And then I'm gonna make this whole thing an integer. Okay, so now we can begin with our C Veritasthenes code. So let's first create a list of all the numbers from one to our max int, and let's set all of them to the value of true. So let's do number set is equal to, in square brackets, we'll put true, and then times max int. This will just create a list that is length max int of all Boolean true values. Okay, so next we know that zero and one are not prime numbers, so let's go ahead and indicate that they're not prime by setting both of them to false. So I'll do number set at index zero, and number set at index one are both equal to false. All right, so now let's start searching through our number set. So let's say for number comma is prime in enumerate number set. So by enumerating our number set, each Boolean true or false value now becomes a tuple by adding its index, which is coincidentally the number it's representing to be prime or not. So now that we're looping through our number set checking each tuple, let's first check if its is prime flag is still set to true. Then also, remember we only have to check numbers up to the square root of our max int. So let's say and number is less than or equal to max int to the one half power. So if that if statement passes, we know the number that we're on is prime. So let's remove every multiple of this number in our number set. So let's do for multiple in range and let's start from our number squared all the way up to our max int with steps of our number. This should cover every multiple of that number. And by remove every multiple, I actually meant let's set their is prime flag to false. So we'll do number set at the index of that multiple is equal to false. Okay, so there we have it. So by the end of this for loop, our number set will have every prime index set to true and every non-prime index set to false. So let's build our prime string by saying prime underscore string is equal to, we'll do empty quotes because we don't want a separator. We'll say dot join. And inside of join is going to be a list of all the prime numbers. So let's say x for x comma y in enumerate number set if y. So we're enumerating number set again here. So it will be a list of tuples containing x and y x is the number and y is that is prime flag. So if y is true, it will add that number to the list. So x here will be an integer. So let's go ahead and convert it to a string for our dot join method. So now that our prime string is created, all we need to do now is return prime underscore string from index n to index n plus five. And now we're done. Let's test our solution by doing print solution and our input will be three and we should get that result that was listed in the problem statement, 71113. So let's run this, and there we go. Okay, so let's see how long it takes to call our solution 10,000 times to simulate calling it once per minion. So let's import time, and let's set our start time here. So let's say start is equal to time dot time. Next, let's do a for loop. So we'll do for in in range 10,000. And in here, let's call solution with our input of n. And then after our for loop, let's print how long it took to go through the for loop. So let's do print. And in here, we'll do an f string. And in these curly braces, we'll do time dot time minus our start time. And then we'll put seconds. All right, so let's run this and see how long it takes. Now, while this is running, this is where I want you as the community to get involved. Try to either create a new solution or modify this one and time how long it takes to be called 10,000 times like I'm doing here and see if you can beat my time. Remember though, you're not allowed to use any imports or exports in the function. I've become intrigued by this problem and I have been trying to think of different ways to cut compute time down. Knowing how brilliant you guys are, I know you'll probably come up with a much better solution than this one. So there we go. Here's the time to beat is 24.7 seconds. Give it a shot and leave your total runtime in the comments below. If you like this video and want more like it, please let me know by leaving a like and consider hitting that subscribe button to join the community. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.